So, so typical of Manchester United this season. Uh, you can blame the Juan Mata red card all you want, but, you know, just when it looked as though Van Hal was starting to get tactics right, he was making some good decisions, even substitutes were looking all right. He does this in the match. Like I can understand why he's resting certain players because we play Liverpool on Thursday in the Europa League. Fair enough. I can't understand why he hasn't rested Daily Blind. He's played near on every single 90 minutes. He's played every game for the full 90 minutes, yet he doesn't need a rest. So I question why other players that are in the physical condition of their career, like Morgan Schneidlin, who's 26, you know, he's one year younger than Daily Blind. He's in the physical condition of his career. I don't think he's had a recent injury problem, so I don't understand why he was rested if Daily Blind wasn't. Of course he'll use the resting issue as an excuse, but it doesn't make too much sense. I mean, you've got a uh, teenager Marcus Rashford playing his fourth game in 11, ga uh, in 11 days. He didn't need a rest, so why did someone like Memphis? Or was that a tactical decision because Martial was ineffective at right wing last game, so you've brought Lingard in and obviously pushed Martial to the left for Memphis. You know, fair enough with certain things, but the Daily Blind one, I can't excuse. There's no reason why he should have played this game. He should have been rested, and he was at fault for the only goal we conceded. Smalling was absolutely tremendous coming back from injury. Man of the match for us today, and he, he's just been a rock. He really has. He was fantastic against Rondon, stifled the pressure, even Berahino at times, but when he couldn't get there, when Rondon switched, Switched over to Daily Blind, we, we conceded. I don't understand why Fusa Mensa was dropped. Like, seriously, he should have played in for Daily Blind, and we would have seen how good they, those two could have been as a partnership, Fusa Mensa and Daily Blind, but alas, it didn't happen and we lost. And to be honest, we deserved that, and obviously, Juan Mata stupid stupid red card this is probably more rash than cockerlands just in in terms of the, the it isn't a north london derby it, well it isn't a rivalry it's nothing like that it's early in the game it's in your own half and you're making two stupid decisions like that i mean a lot of people are blaming mike dean but personally they were both yellow card offenses so he deserved the red card stupid the first one the free kick he blocks it in his own half why are you blocking it like <laughs> All it's all that's going to happen is it's going to be cleared by our defence, so it, 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 it's pointless. And then when you've got that yellow, five minutes later, you decide to make such a rash challenge, unnecessary challenge, blatant yellow card challenge, straight after getting a yellow, to get a red card and get us sent off. And ever, from, ever since then, it was just too much for us. Martial was doing really, really well, but he just... He just had no one to give the ball to. Same as Rashford, he made a couple of good... Um, chances but it, it was just disjointed because we had one less attacker and it just it just didn't work it, it really didn't work and yeah we ended up losing and that's two steps forward one step back we've lost against Sunderland against Norwich against West Brom <sighs> I'm pretty sure there's other teams off the top of my head that are uh, lower in the table that we've lost against we've drew against teams like Newcastle yet we beat teams like Arsenal Spurs Liverpool consistently we play well against them Fair enough, Arsenal beat us 3-0 earlier in the league, but that, that's a minority. Even last season, we beat Manchester City, we beat Liverpool, we beat Spurs. We beat the top teams and bottle it against the lower league teams. And it's just ridiculous. Is it a mentality issue? Is it just generally because we, we can't create enough? I don't understand. And all right, another play I'm going to criticise today, I don't know whether it's down to him or whether, I, I don't know what it is, but whenever Michael Carrick plays this season, our build-up play is so slow, even before Mata got sent off. We didn't create anything, really. And this, whenever Carrick gets selected, we are so slow in our build-up play. And I'm not sure if that's directly down to him. Sometimes he takes far too long on the ball. But even other players, when he's there, it, it, is it because he's not making the runs like, that someone even like Marouane Fellini would and Herrera would? I, I don't know, but we just, honestly... When he plays, we are terrible this season. And that's a complete contrast to last season, where if he didn't play, the chances are we would lose. But these, as I said on Twitter, these things come to an end. And it's best if Michael Carrick leaves at the end of the season. It really is. There's no point in keeping him. We've got four or five months left on his contract. We'll thank him a lot all right, for what he's done for the club. But it's best if he leaves and we get someone else in. Because... 
it, 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 it just doesn't seem to work. We got rid of players like Vidic. We've got rid of players like Darren Fletcher. You know, t players... Rio Ferdinand obviously retired. Patrice Evra, players that have been at the club, that have done just as much as Michael Carrick, or if not more, and they've had to go, they've been sold, they've left, whatever, retired. So I think it's about time that Michael Carrick does, all right? This isn't a... This isn't a, having a go at him, but he is 34, so it's understandable, and it just needs to be done. Oh, there, 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 that was the main problem. It was Daily Blind and Michael Carrick, in my opinion. Other players obviously didn't perform as you would expect them to, but it, it's, it's just a game we couldn't afford to lose. We really couldn't. If we really want to get in that top four, this is a game we had to win. West Ham won, so we're now down at sixth. And we would have been two points off Arsenal had we won. But now we are five points off Arsenal. And we're three points off Manchester City. But they have a game in hand. So potentially six points behind them. Our next game is against Manchester City. Now I'm looking forward to that because we do play better against good teams. So maybe that could be a turning point. But it, it, there's too many maybes and ifs this season. And you know four straight wins. Things look rosy. And then one defeat. That's all it takes this season. One defeat. And it all just looks as though it could free fall. This season is unpredictable and yeah, we're just going to have to hope for the best. Next, we've got Europa League against Liverpool and then West Ham in the Cup. Those games have to be won, alright? Over the course of the two legs against Liverpool, we have to beat them, obviously. So if we lose against Anfield, although it would be disastrous, like against Michelin, we could take it in the home leg and make sure we beat them. But we have to progress in both competitions for this season not to be drawn as a failure because we're sixth now, five points off third, potentially six points off third by the time uh, Manchester City play their game in hand. So we'll see what this season does. But at the minute, it looks as though West Ham have a better chance than us of getting top four.